Coming up on First at Four, Governor Bashir declares a state of emergency after heavy rain causes major flooding in western Kentucky. And Daniel Cameron announces his running mate as he seeks the governor's office. And the potential for strong storms remains as we head through the nighttime hours late, late tonight and into tomorrow when heavy rain and gusty winds could move into your area. Coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, the threat for severe storms and heavy rain is still with us, especially tomorrow. Parts of western Kentucky are underwater today. It is a first alert weather day, and meteorologist Evan Hatter is here with more on what to expect. Evan? And that's right, Steve. Uh, first alert pinpoint Doppler around the mountains much quieter than it was yesterday. That is not the case as we head further off to the west. We have declared a first alert weather day mainly into the day tomorrow. This is for the possibility for more strong winds and heavy rain scattered strong to severe storms tomorrow late morning into the afternoon is when the uh, models are pinpointing the best time. But again, the models haven't handled this well, so please check back with that first alert weather app all the time just for the latest forecast there. Overall, a level one marginal risk for severe weather. This is the latest outlook just coming out from the Storm Prediction Center for the southern part of the region. If anything does pop up, it could be briefly strong, but today is not much of an issue. We've got a few showers in the parts of Letcher County right now. We'll pan over here near Cumberland, uh, Letcher and Harlan County line, and then a few more south of 460 there and actually moving out of Buchanan County in Virginia, but Garden, Virginia about to get a nice downpour. Moving back out statewide, you see the focus where we have several flash flood warnings still in effect across far west Kentucky. The Jackson Purchase region of the state hit very, very hard. Graves County, of course, Graves County was hit with that awful tornado just uh, less than a year and a half ago. The EF4 went through downtown Mayfield, and uh, it's been a rough day out there. In fact, estimated rainfall totals from Doppler radar nearly 15 inches of rain. I haven't seen uh, an image like that since, frankly, our flood last year, almost a year ago, uh, in fact, a year ago this month. The official numbers from the Weather Service, uh, uh, the FAA sites, 5.1 inches in Paducah, 6.6 .6 in Mayfield. However, it is unofficially been declared. In fact, you see one of the uh, sites, in fact, we'll pop the, uh, the storm report on there, north of Dukedom, southern parts of Graves County, Kentucky, a foot of rain in Water Valley. That's incredible. Unofficially a preliminary Kentucky state rainfall record there. One or excuse me, 11.28 inches of rain at the Graves County Mesonet site uh, between 12 a.m. and 1 p.m. today. The old record was about 10 and a half inches set back in 1997, so 26 years ago. We'll continue to watch the possibility for more heavy rain, maybe not to that extent moving into our region and the details on that in a few minutes. Yeah, let's hope we don't get anything close to that. Uh, Evan, thank you very much. Continuing our coverage now out of western Kentucky, far western Kentucky, where several counties still have water over roadways, in some cases 8 to 12 inches of water. Here's a look at some of the destruction. Dangerous flooding is reported, as Evan mentioned, in Graves County, where a rare flash flood emergency was issued. Roads have been closed due to being impassable. There were multiple water rescues before dawn today. Some homeowners also reported water in their homes. Now, the good news is no deaths have been reported out in western Kentucky. Governor Bashir has declared a state of emergency following the heavy rain. The state of emergency activates price gouging laws. It also elevates the state emergency operations center to level three. Governor Bashir's office says five Kentucky emergency management managers have been sent to the Mayfield area. Swift water search and rescue teams have also been put on alert in case they are needed in Graves County. Well, we now know who will run alongside Daniel Cameron as the Republican Party looks to take back the governor's seat in November. Cameron chose State Senator Robbie Mills. Jeremy Toms is in Frankfurt explaining why Cameron made the choice and the pair's goals. The skies may be gloomy over Frankfurt today, but Kentucky's Republican Party is feeling bright about its future. As gubernatorial nominee Daniel Cameron has picked the senator from Henderson to be his running mate. Cameron made the announcement at the party's headquarters, touting Mills's record in the state legislature. 
is Robbie Mills, where the state senator represents Dawson Springs, led the charge to rebuild Western Kentucky after the devastating tornadoes. It was Robbie Mills who passed a law requiring a voter ID to vote. And now state he also Robbie discussed Mills' Mills's work in defending the coal industry and called him the first to sound the alarm about radical gender ideology. Both say the Cameron Mills ticket will also focus on education and crime, two places where they say they sharply deviate from Governor Andy Bashir's vision. And Mills introduced himself to the ticket by going on the offensive against the incumbent Democrat. He vetoed my bill to stop boys from competing in girls' sports. Because of his shutdowns, remember this, because of his shutdowns, students are now suffering extreme learning loss right now. He released thousands of violent offenders from jail, and many of those have recommitted crimes. Governor Andy Bashir's campaign responded to the announcement, saying in a statement that selecting the person who helped lead the charge to enact former Governor Matt Bevin's plan to slash pensions for our teachers, police, and firefighters shows that Daniel Cameron does not care about hardworking Kentuckians. They added that the governor is proud to be running with his lieutenant, Jacqueline Coleman, an active educator herself who understands the value of Kentucky's public schools. In Frankfort, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Senator Mills also announced this morning that he will attend Fancy Farm next month. Beyond that, Mills says grassroots campaigning and knocking on lots of doors will be important for their success during the next 16 weeks. Workers for UPS held a practice picket today in Hazard. It was part of a lead up to what may become a strike by Teamsters the union representing nearly 340,000 UPS workers. The two sides would need to agree on a new co labor contract before midnight July 31st to avoid a strike. The workers have held practice picket rallies across the country. We've been showing you some of those in recent days. Teamsters Local Union 651 President James Brandt says the goal is to prepare for August 1st. This entire building of workers is 100% united in striking and hitting this pavement on August 1st if they need to. And uh, nationwide, we are united. Numerous issues have been raised, but one is pay for part-time workers. About 60% of UPS workers are part-time, and they say they are not receiving a livable wage. Alice Lloyd College administrators are still working to rebuild after damage caused by the July 2022 flood. The flood damaged their retaining walls and bridges, which they have crews repairing. President Jim Stepp says when the flood happened, students and staff were ready to serve and have not turned back since. Everybody just jumped together. They, uh, within two weeks, we were ready for school, and school started on time. We had folks going into the community serving meals, uh, taking cleaning supplies. Uh, and, and it, it was certainly a tragedy, but sometimes during a tragedy, you see the best of people. While rebuilding from the flood, the school is also making new additions to the campus. We'll have more on that tonight at 6. Hazard Community and Technical College has received a large donation from American Electric Power. That donation was a new, larger bucket truck for their lineman program. HCTC recently expanded its program and needed that additional truck, and their partner, AEP, provided it. Keela Miller, Dean of the Workforce Community and Economic Development, says AEP has been helpful to the growth of the program. So our Lyman training program has been uh, here at the college since 2013. Uh, from the very beginning, American Electric Power uh, has been a great partner of ours. Miller says they look forward to continuing their partnership with AEP as the, they begin to work towards offering apprenticeships to lineman students. We'll have more about this tonight at 6. A Tennessee mother is behind bars after allegedly admitting to a horrific crime. Police say Patricia Sylvester strangled her 12-year-old son to death and tried to kill her 4-year-old. Brendan Tierney spoke to the devastated relatives and has more from Shelbyville. Sierra Burgess says her three children would always play outside with their downstairs neighbors. She never thought one of those boys would be killed when she heard loud noises last night. Definitely devastated being a mom. 
Um, I just couldn't imagine. Police say Patricia Sylvester murdered her son Esteban in their apartment that's now covered in police tape. He loved his mama. <laughs> his mama loved him. He was his pride of joy. Joyce is the victim's grandmother. She says Patricia struggled with mental health issues, but had no clue it was this bad. And this mess put me down like it is. But she never opened up to me. Police say Patricia ran away attempting to kill her four-year-old son, too. That child was hurt and is now being cared for by his aunt, Teresa. Right now, I'm upset. It hurts because I don't want my sister being locked up. She has no idea why her sister would do this. Esteban was entering seventh grade at Harris Middle School and loved playing basketball. She's sorry. She's sorry. But why? Why do you mean sorry? Give us a hand. Why? Police searched this dumpster looking for evidence officers say Patricia tried to throw away. Sierra says this scary situation makes her want to move. She could have literally grabbed anyone walking up those stairs and hurt their kids. Patricia Sylvester is charged with one count of criminal homicide and one count of attempted criminal homicide. She remains in custody on a $2 million bond. Coming up on First at Four, sweltering heat continues to affect many southern states, making vacation travel a little more unenjoyable for some. And stormy weather continues later on tonight and into Thursday as well. I'm tracking the latest details after this. Thing Breaks is a new kind of auto protection plan that gives you more. You gotta have a protection plan.